probably one of the most interesting cases I ever represented was a young man in, from Columbus who several years ago was charged with six counts of aggravated assault as well as one count of murder. Um, he was actually charged with murdering the mother of a child at her baby shower as well as the aggravated assault of six of the attendees at that baby shower. It was a late night baby shower um, and took place at the woman's home and in a neighboring lot. Cars parked everywhere, large number of people, gangs from north and south side, both involved according to the police reports. Um, we went to trial, it was probably the longest aggravated assault trial ever held here in Lowndes County. About six or six days to the best of my recollection, had some large exhibits, two scale exhibits to the scene. Ironically, the young man was not tried for the murder of the young lady because in the course of looking at the evidence I found a urine cup from still sealed from the hospital. I'm shaking it around and going, uh, guys, talking to the detectives, what's this? Sounds like a weapon of some sort to me, like maybe a bullet. Oh, well, let's find out what it is, Don. I'm like, no, not without the DA here. You're not opening this in my presence without the DA. They called the DA sometime later that day, opened it. Guess what? It was a killing bullet, which they identified as another bullet that I had already seen. Um, subsequently, we obtained an order from Judge Montgomery to send that bullet to the FBI lab at Quantico for testing for ballistics, lead content, things of that nature. Lead content, of course, is no longer uh, a valid test. Um sometime between me looking at the bullet, the DA looking at the bullet, and the last detective handling it, the bullet got lost. It was never found again. So the young man was not tried for the murder. He was tried and convicted of six counts of aggravated assault. We had bifurcated or split the hearing trial into two separate parts. One, of course, being guilt and the second being penalty. The victim's young lady who was killed, sister, testified, and, and her mother testified and said, they didn't believe this young man should go to jail over this. They did not want him to do any jail time. Judge Montgomery, I think, was absolutely floored. He subsequently sentenced the young man to six concurrent sentences of 15 years each. I have, in the last year, seen this guy, he's out of, out of jail now, did not serve the entire 15 years, doing, working, providing for himself, providing for his mother, doing quite well from all appearances. Subsequent to the trial, some eight, nine months after the trial, the sister came up to me and said she needed to talk to me. I'm like, okay, sure, what? And she said, you know, while we were in the witness room and you asked to talk to me and they told me I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't say I didn't want to talk to you. They told me I couldn't talk to you, which of course is unethical. It was not the DA. It was not the DA. Let me make sure I, I make that perfectly clear. Um, and I said, why didn't they want you to talk to me? She said, because someone else fired a gun that night and came to us and offered us money to, for us not to tell that he had fired a gun because it would incriminate him. And he is, of course, involved with one of the gangs that was present in the parking lot. Of course, at that point, it was too late because there's a six-month window. It was too late to bring that evidence up. I advised my client of what was going on. There was a gap we could have fit into. At that point, he didn't want to pursue it. Uh, I will go to my deathbed believing that child was innocent of every one of those charges.